I can't believe it's full of flaws, but it's still the best and most common plane ever built. Hello my friends, my name is Vladimir. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to share with you a story about the plane that was created out of flaws. It was born old, a long time ago, back in 1948, this incredible aircraft was born. So please, welcome Antonov An-2. Now you can film me falling off the top. Actually, the first name of this plane was SKH-1, which means Agricultural One. And I'll say it again, this plane tore apart all the stereotypes that ever existed. The first birth of this aircraft was in the pre-war era, in 1940. It was unsuccessful, but then suddenly in 1948, it was decided to release this aircraft. I guess in those days, it was forbidden to say such words as marketing. But it really was a brilliant marketing ploy to create a plane with an old radial engine, a linen plating. It's a biplane, so again, it definitely was born old. It still contains many elements that were used for aircrafts during the war. This is the longest running aircraft in the world which is still produced. There was a release of over 18,000 of them, and you can find it in almost every spot of the world. I can confirm that personally. I've seen them everywhere, in the United States, in Canada, in Europe. So if you're flying from Europe to the USA, at each aerodome you'll see the AN-2. And it's true, this plane still flies and performs its task. It's amazing. The landmark one, indeed. Yeah, and it's impressive that he was born old and he wasn't meant to exist. Three three seven, where are you? We're coming, one moment. No way. Man, you're so cool. Well done. It seems old and ordinary in many ways. It's even more archaic, and I think if I was asked to describe the AN-2 briefly, I'd say take an airplane, a shuttle bus, an all-terrain vehicle, a locomotive, 
and do something flying out of it. And voila! This one actually opened up the possibility for people from the USSR to travel distances. To get to, let's say, where deers or an all-terrain vehicle can't take you. And to did it all. This plane flew in all regions of the Soviet Union and then eventually all over the world. I've had the experience of flying on the AN-2. I just did it again and want to share my feelings with you. The radial engine, which is here, has 1,000 horsepower. It began to be produced in 1938, and given the fact that it wasn't a new invention, but a semblance of the R-Cyclone engine, historians may correct me if I'm wrong, which in that time was copied from the American one, 1,000 horsepower. And just think about it, the engine displacement is 8 gallons. This one consumes a huge amount of fuel, so we were shocked when we calculated that its consumption on a cruise flight, at a speed of about 110 miles per hour, is 1 gallon per minute. Just imagine. Note also that it has an oil tank as well, with a capacity of 32 gallons, but usually there are about 25 gallons. Recently, we flew and watched the AN-225 Maria, and the man who designed the largest airplane in the world started with the AN-2 and considered it one of his most successful works, and it's true. Oleg Antonov named this plane All Destination Plane, so that was its first name, because there was a need for a machine that could fly anywhere and land anywhere on an unprepared area. Look at this landing gear. Wheels and brakes were used on the Ilyushin Il-2 during the war, and also many other details that were used in the era. The first releases of the AN-2 were here in Kiev. It was produced here for a long time. Later, it was manufactured in Dolokhrudny. But the main production, about 11,000, was released in Poland. Very old biplane scheme indeed. Linen plating, slow speed, huge voracious engine. And at that time in 1948, this baby was born, already having a gray beard. And with 1,000 horsepower, it flies at 100 miles per hour. It's just like a cabinet that is flying upwind. But at the same time, this plane has fantastic takeoff and landing characteristics. And it really is due to its layout. I mean, it's a biplane. It has a huge wing area plus a very powerful mechanization. I mean, really powerful. Just look. There are flaps on the lower and upper wing. Also a flap rod and slats on the upper wing over here. So you can see that mechanicization here is very good. The area of the wing of the AN-2 is simply huge. The enormous enormous engine, but take note that the resistance is colossal. But essentially, this plane wasn't originally designed to fly fast and far, rather for short distance flights. I mean up to 200 miles, maybe 300 miles. But wait, 300 miles on this baby? It's not that easy. Actually, it's not a typical AN-2 that we see here, because we used to see them, unfortunately, slightly crooked, standing in puddles of oil. But with this one, everything is okay. I mean, really, so good that we're about to show you what's inside. Don't be shocked. It's not a Falcon, friends. It's just a regular AN-2 aircraft, which has been upgraded by the owner. A chimney, I swear. Well, that's a control lock we see here, so that's the AN-2. Well, these utilitarian ideas were elaborate and may seem primitive, but again, everything you see here was carefully designed, as for a plane of that era. The cockpit has an excellent panoramic view, so you can easily look under the wing during the flight. Basically, we have the engine instruments installed here, and the air navigation instruments over here. The concept of this minimalism and simplicity lived up to the expectations, and all the original doubts are gone. Remember the end of World War II. Aviation back then was literally the ultimate leader. 
All others wanted to be faster, faster, farther, higher. And here, this chimney in contrast. Just think, where are all those fast, best planes now? They don't exist anymore. This one forgives all fails in the controls, and it's almost impossible for the AN-2 to go into a spin. The insanely steep mechanization of this plane, I mean, look how long the flaps are on the lower wing, on the upper wing as well, a flap run and slats, all this won't let it go into a spin. It's the worst case scenario the plane will start parachuting itself, and it's already been proven that this is a highly secure aircraft according to security statistics. And here again, we see the paradox. Everything around is modern, the best. And what we see here, an ancient, weird plane with very old aerodynamic scheme. I'm guessing since Wright Brothers days, I mean, those planes probably ran out in the World War I era. And how is the maintenance going? For example, the front wheel fell off. Are you kidding me? Could it happen to the AN-2? How is that possible? Imagine, the plane crashed into the lithospheric plates in full motion, cracked it, and its front wheel fell off. Well, my suggestion is to start with the lithospheric plate repairing. If the glass breaks, it's clear with a large amount of spare parts for this flat glazing, it will be easily replaced. And this one is certified, right? Sure, no doubt. And look at this extremely huge prop over here. The first props to be installed on the AN-2 were wooden. My father started his flight career with an AN-2. He said that wooden props were so popular back then because they were lighter and more agile than metal. But it has one flaw. The wooden propeller is afraid of any rock. That's why it simply failed. If you think the owner of this plane is an old sickly grandpa, you're so far from the truth. So we're going to show you an episode of what this man is capable of. This plane is quite expensive to operate. 52 gallons per hour of aviation gasoline. It's a lot. And considering that it flies at 100 miles per hour, it's too expensive. But again, it wasn't made for that. It's not a cruise plane. It's not even the business class we were flying in. And even flying this plane is not that easy. I mean, from a pilot's perspective. You must do everything gently and kind of respectively. It's like first you do the action with the controls, then the plane thinks. And if it accepts your action, then it does the maneuver. However, people who have really mastered it, they can do real miracles, even perform a high pilotage. I love this plane, really, just as many other people do. And even if sometimes we are making a little fun of it and its flaws, we always do that out of love. It's a truly wonderful plane. And what's more, it's so great that there are still people out there who aren't just finishing off this plane, even though I don't see how that's possible, but who are keeping it in such excellent condition as we've been seeing today. I flew the AN-2 today, which is also kind of an experience, you know, very complicated feelings. It's like driving a big truck. So friends, come and fly such a wonderful plane as this one. And even on such ultra-modern aircrafts just as this extra. And you know what? Amazingly, that same pilot in the morning flies this super fast and heavy-duty plane and in the evening, he's at the helm of the AN-2. My name is Vladimir. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.